Hi, my name's Richard Carr and I'm a lecturer in policing studies at Liverpool John Moores University. In particular, I focus on investigation. So with a, a background as a former detective superintendent in Merseyside, with a history of investigating serious and organized crime, major crime, corruption, and a background in intelligence. What I want to do today is talk about the serious and organized crime strategy that's recently been published by the government. So the government will say that serious and organized crime is probably the most significant threat that we face with more deaths, deaths attributed to serious and organised crime than perhaps other areas of criminality such as counter-terrorism. Also with a cost of the UK economy of around £37 billion a year, which has escalated actually since over, over the last three or four years, it's escalated by an additional £13 billion. So you can say that not just in terms of cost financially, but also costs in terms of the community. The impact of serious and organised crime is significant. So we can look at London uh, at the present. So year to date, there's been 113 murders, many of which have been attributed to guns and gang criminality. So as, as groups fight for turf or territory so that they can sell their commodities around controlled drugs, they will escalate their violence to reinforce their threats and, and make sure that their turf isn't overrun by other criminal gangs. But what you might say is that the government's approach to this isn't working or isn't working particularly well. So what does the government do? So the government sets a framework and as part of that framework, what it will say is that police forces, national crime agency, regional organised crime units should target the high harm offenders that are causing the most harm within communities. And in doing so, what they should do is take a four P's approach, or it's known locally as a four P's approach. What that means is that they should pursue offenders, so target those high harm groups, so pursue through the criminal justice system. They should prevent individuals from entering the criminal justice system in the first place. They should work towards protecting the communities from harm. And then finally, they should be prepared. So law enforcement should be prepared to tackle area, all areas of criminality. So coming back to the framework, when it talks around targeting those high harm offenders, the question is, well, who or what are they? Are they the high-level serious and organised criminals that import significant amounts of controlled drugs into the UK? Are they the low-level offenders who, who commit low-level street crime within the communities? Or are they perhaps those middle-ground street gangs who are shooting each other, they are stabbing each other, and no doubt bringing a great deal of fear within the communities in which they operate? Well, my view is it's those groups that need to be targeted, and it's probably those groups where, through austerity, uh, through the financial crisis, where the police services have had budget constraints or budget reductions of conservatively 25%, it's those groups where the focus has perhaps shifted. So what the police service is now left with is a decision to make whether we tackle the highest levels of criminality, or focus on other areas uh, to perhaps a lesser degree. So if you take the gang culture as a, on a transitional process, you get the single individual who commits the crime, they may then join a criminal gang where no doubt their, their crime escalates, and as they get drawn into that gang culture where they are forced to either arm themselves for self-protection or they uh, enforce criminality in their area through, through significant levels of crime. But they all aspire to be that high-end criminal where the, the financial benefits, I suppose, become really significant. And what I would say, if you come back to that 4Ps approach, the police service are good at targeting those offenders at pursuing that level of criminality or pursuing offenders through the criminal justice system. They are good, but that is very costly. And when resources are tight, they need to look at alternative measures. So they probably need to look more at civil remedies. So gang injunctions, by way of an example, 
probably need to look more towards those areas where they are much less in terms of financial costs to implement, but they have great benefits. When you look at the data, they have great benefits in terms of managing street level gang criminality. And they should also look at alternative measures, so diversionary tactics, etc., that will help to disrupt and deter or act as a deterrence from criminality from that midpoint criminal group.